I'll just say hi to him before we start. Hey, Brian. What's up, baby? Brian, sorry. Thanks for doing this, brother. You got it, man. Sorry I haven't been more available. Uh, no, it's okay. You're always great. Uh, there's a comic with me named Joe Machi, funny guy. He may or may not talk, so just know that, Joe. It's hey, Brian. Brian Jones. And, uh, cool. He's a big Who is this Joe? Who is this Joe that is not familiar with me? Who is this average Joe? Well, well he's, I'm uh, sorry, he's I'm under, just not that old. He's oh. under 50. <laughs> <laughs> I should have said that. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, I'm busting your balls, baby. I'm not that well known. I like to keep it that way. Right, here we go with the. This is this to me is arguably my best guest ever on my direct TV show. Certainly best black guest. Uh, <laughs> and when we say we, I, I, when I say that is it's people think this is racist, but don't look into this. I say most well behaved guest. Uh, <laughs> Most guess who knows his his place the best. Now, uh, as you can tell, no, he's 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 funny. He's he's uh, fucking hilarious. He's uh, one of the best uh, football players with a lot of street cred. From uh, he's a tough motherfucker, a ladies' man, if I might add. Uh, he always looks cool, and uh, and he's a good man. Brian Jones, and he's on the radio now. Brian, what's up, man? Hey man, Artie, I miss you, baby. It's been way, way too long. And yes, we had some great times on your your Direct TV show. Th- those are some of the fondest memories I've had. We had some great times, no matter where you were doing your show from. I remember that shithole we used to do it from <laughs> when you were with Fox. Remember that building over there at the uh, Rockefeller Center? Oh God, yeah. Well, that was when uh, uh, me and Nick had the show. It was just on yeah. the radio. It was very intimate, and you came in, and uh, you were you were so funny that night. We just had a blast with you what i like about you is you, you know how to balance like being funny with you know having a corporate job I, you don't seem to be uptight you know and uh, it's just uh, it's great to have you on like that you know well i appreciate that my man uh, you know sometimes it's when keeping it real goes wrong but uh, i'm always up for having a damn good time and if you don't want to have a good time i don't want to be around you well you know well here's the thing you know, i want to ask you this uh, you could answer this you don't have to get into it at all because again it, what, first of all plug your show when you on when can we find you on cbs radio right yeah geo and jones on cbs sports radio network we're on from six to nine eastern uh, Monday through Friday, and then I'm on Inside College Football on the CBS Sports Television Network. Hey, and hey Brian, uh, every, Brian, every pull, Tuesday. Hey, yeah, Brian, Brian, pull the mic away from your mouth a little bit because you're you're back to distorting. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, 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 man. Yeah. Is that better? Is no that, problem. Yeah. Good. Okay. Sorry. We just want to make sure we hear you. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's you. It's you and that guy that I originally uh, saw you with. The, uh, the you have you and a, a co-host, right? Uh, it's me. It used to be Chris Moore. That was the Mojo Show when I was on in the evenings. Now I'm on with a young fella named Greg Giannotti. Right. And and uh, we're on six to nine every morning, man. Bright and early. I got to get my ass up at four in the morning every day. I did that, man. I did that with the Stern Show for eight and a half years, and people said to me, I, I, the only part of the Stern Show that remotely felt like work was getting up. And then I did, stand, yeah. but I did stand up on the weekends, so I became nocturnal on the weekends. And then it was like I had a paper route during the week. <laughs> <laughs> you know? uh, but and you gotta, uh, I tell you, I have dreamed one day this might happen, man. Uh, the 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 Brian and Artie show. How's that sound? One day. Let's do it. All right. The B and A show or the A and B show. Hell, you're first. I'm always gonna be second fiddle to you. I'll give you the respect. I'll give you the respect because uh, <laughs> you deserve it. But politically, about what's going on right now, when you see stuff like Paris and shit like that, I mean, what what goes through your mind, like as an American? I'm 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 I'm, I'm serious. I mean, uh, are you scared? Do you, do you want blood? Like, what do you think of when you watch well, this shit? I, I, first of all, I like, I like for a lot of people here to quit blaming America for what's happening in France. Right. And, and while it, oh, the world is interconnected, especially uh, in an economic sense, and, and now it needs to be even more so interconnected from a political sense with all these nut jobs running around trying to kill people in the name of their religion. Uh, it's just a damn shame, man. Uh, I, it, it's terrifying. You're right. Uh, but what can you do other than and keep going on, moving forward, and, and doing your thing? Uh, that's that's the key, and then hopefully we can partner together collectively around this this world and and 
and, 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 and smoke these cats out. And, 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 you know, I don't think you're going to be able to talk any sense into them, so you're going to have to blow them to smithereens. Or as Mike Tyson said, knock them into Bolivia. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, just move them to Bolivia. I think you really meant that. Yeah. No, I want, no, no, no. We don't want to move them there. We want to get them off this earth. Uh, send, send, them to, send them to Mars or something where they can do whatever the hell it is they, they, they want to do. But it's just a damn shame that, uh, we're having to deal with with nonsense like that, you know. Even here in our own country, with domestic terrorism, these nut people, nut jobs who don't believe in equality and and are still rallying around a Confederate flag and stupid ideas like that. I mean, it's just insane. Some of the stuff that continues to persist, uh, whether it's from uh, abroad or even here at home. Uh, I just. Well, I, back to Rodney King, why can't we all get along? <laughs> uh, you know, you guys like you and I, we can get along with anyone as long as they treat us fairly. And, and, and or, or as my buddy down in Texas would say, I'm going to do unto others, do unto others before they do unto me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, you said uh, when it comes from abroad, it is the worst. When a woman says it, it's terrible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you said no, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you said, you know, you, the thing you said that's the, the biggest thing that people got to get through their heads is we're not going to talk sense into someone who's going to no. blow their fucking self up. No. You know, uh, it's not going to happen. So right. No, no, what, not, not, not. Uh, not ever, and, and if you hate the way we live and all that shit, how about not come to our country? Yeah. If you don't like the freedom you have in France, how about not go to that country? Right. Or any other country where you don't like their ideas and the way they go about doing things, stay your ass in the desert. Nobody's forcing you to go to these countries. You, I, you, you chose to go to them, and, and if you want to have your little caliphate or whatever the hell you want to call it, uh, do your little party in there in that desert, man, or wherever it is in the mountains of Afghanistan. Leave us the hell alone. It, that's. I think that the big thing is, yeah, they hate when people have fun. I think they really get yeah. pissed off when they see people enjoying themselves. And I mean, think about you know your life. It's a charmed existence. You worked hard for it, but you know you made money playing football, and now you're broadcasting, and it's it's really a a charmed life. And then people get jealous of that here. And imagine uh, you know over in Saudi Arabia when these people are. Uh, uh, you know, uh, keeping you down, and then you start to say, "Okay, America's financing these people that are keeping me down," and then you get jealous and blah 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 blah. And as soon as you see uh, one, you know, I don't know, one Usher video, you want to kill us. <laughs> we're, having, we're having nothing but a good time. There's pussy all over the place, and uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's you know, that, I think that's what it comes down to. They think it's one big party over here, and when you're not invited to the party. Uh, you get mad, but what they don't realize is they are invited to the party. We, we, come over. What do we give a shit? Right. Yeah. We're, we're, we're trying to we're, we're trying to have those seventy virgins right here, right? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, man. It's like the yeah that that whole thing. If one of these terrorists uh, goes uh, goes to wherever they go after they die and take a bunch of people with them, I really hope the seventy virgins are dudes. That would be great. What else? <laughs> <laughs> Hi Osama. Hi Osama. It's me. It's I'm one of your virgins. I'm Jerry. Uh, so uh, That's the funniest shit I've ever heard. Of. There's a lot of there's a lot of straight virgin dudes though. So that could, that's a good point. That that's could be a, bad for other people. Uh, <laughs> that's a nice you, you, hope it, you hope it's 70 Charlie Sheens, right? Yeah, oh, God. <laughs> oh. What about that, first of all? I mean, the amount of fucking Charlie Sheen has done. Uh, I know, Brian, you're probably up there, but um, uh, <laughs> you, you at least do it on the, you know, uh, under the radar. With the, I mean, Charlie Sheen is, you know, he gets AIDS or HIV. He's HIV positive. He's still banging chicks, just doesn't care. Uh, yeah, man. That's, I mean, that look, he might be facing criminal charges. Actually, I bet he's still getting shaken down by some of these people who might be he might have infected, you know, or uh, right, uh, yeah, because that's criminal. If if you knowingly do that, there's a law in the books, right? Yeah, he said he was he was uh, paying off people blackmailing to protect his reputation, but I don't think Charlie Sheen is worried about his reputation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what are you going to run for Senate? Sued. <laughs> I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose my. Uh, I'm going to lose my Coca Cola campaign. Uh, well, that's he's got two and a half men money. That's the difference between Charlie Sheen and some of these other stories. And uh, he's not pathetic money wise. Charlie Sheen has right. a boatload of money where some of these other guys don't. And think about it, he had enough money to pay. $10 million in blackmail. That means you probably have a couple hundred million bucks. 
And, Unreal that he would he would go to those links to, to, and he's he's saying you know his side of the story. And there's always two sides of the story. Then there's the truth. But he's saying, hey, I divulged this information beforehand. They went through with with uh, whatever it is we did, right. and then they want to turn around and blackmail me. I mean, uh, you know, of course, I I saw uh, a heading today earlier just in passing where a person said she was not aware that he was HIV positive. So uh, yeah. he may have created a huge shitstorm for himself. But uh, what a crazy, crazy story. And, and then for him to go out in public and, and finally admit that is just even more surreal. Well, and, and the reason he does it is financial. It's not moral or ethical. It's like, look, I can't I can't uh, I can't keep up this money flow. <laughs> you know, right. he, he, you know, <laughs> first of all, how much of a whore do you have to be if a woman has two pieces of information? One, you're Charlie Sheen. Two, you're HIV positive. OK, yeah. I've, I've looked over the forms and I'm still going to fuck you. Where do I check? <laughs> Where do I check? <laughs> I mean, come on, have a little self-respect. I mean, did, did, do you go, is John Cryer available? Can I fuck him? Uh, you know, <laughs> is there anyone you know who's famous with, is Emilio around? Is he HIV positive? Uh, okay, this yeah. is, he was dating porn stars, obviously, so who knows? Right. The, 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 I know this chick from the Stern Show, actually. Uh, this is, what's, what, what, what's, her, what's her first name is, Broad? This was his girlfriend. Uh, Dan just hands me things. Um... Wait a minute. You're going to Brie Olson. Okay. Brie, Brie was on the Stern show all the time and she was uh, very, very promiscuous. <laughs> you know what I mean, uh, you could tell that, uh, you know, she would have fucked anybody who could have got her on Stern. I mean, that, that was the, <laughs> that's what it seemed to so be. How was it, Hardy? <laughs> I tell you, I, I won't say her name, but uh, I, I, one porn star I met on Stern blew me on a beach in Miami. Oh. in front of the Delano about five in the morning and if my life could have just said the end like if my life was a movie and it said the end right there <laughs> it would have been a very part of the pun happy ending uh, you want to be like Richard Pryor you want to be in that long line which line you want to be in the one where you right, die right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I could, if I could have stopped there, uh, you know, that would have been. Of course, I, you know, it just went downhill from there. But uh, when you get blown from a, a porn star, uh, and I'm sure you know this, Brian, uh, <laughs> that is a professional blowjob. That is like, it's like watching a master carpenter on on, on PBS build a deck, you know. And then that's like going to that's like going to Jiffy Lube. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they have a they have like a, a mechanic shirt with their name on it. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be your this is the this is your uh, blower. This is uh, Rachel. Um, yeah, they, hey, they, they they get you in and they get you out, baby. <laughs> As opposed to those like in San Francisco, those happy ending places there, where it's some like like fifty eight year old Asian woman who just did a, a load of dishes. <laughs> She comes out with palm olive on her hands, and you know, and she's just got to, she's got to pay the rent, and she's like, ah, almost like the deer hunter uh, with the guy with the, the, the sound the guy makes when they're playing Russian roulette, and the deer hunter like, she's like, <laughs> mouth, yeah, mouth. She, she hits your cock and you come in two seconds because she's a pro, but there's nothing sexy about. It. <laughs> uh, but, but but Brie Olson was just, you could tell she was trouble too, and. Uh, I, you know, again, she claims, is this the one who claims she got infected? She was having sex with the actor every single night around the time he found out he was infected, uh, yet never told her, never said anything uh, ever. I'm clean, he told me. I'm clean, I'm clean. One time porn star Brie Olson said. So she's not saying if she's infected, but I guess she's one of the ones. She, they're all looking for money is what's happening. Right, and, right. Uh, were you ever blackmailed by a chick, Brian? You don't have to give details, but I mean, you're an NFL player, you know. You know, did you ever get into a situation with a, you know, with a broad when you were single that you were go, whoa, you know, th this chick's trouble. Uh, you can you can identify them, you know, if if you got good game, the ones that right. could possibly be be trouble, and you're like, nah, I'm gonna say no and go the opposite direction. Uh, th this may be more of a headache than it's worth. So right. yeah, I've been in that situation where you you can definitely ID that one and and say. Mm, it's better to move on. It's not worth the headache. It's going to be down the road. No, a true to me, a true player can say is a guy who knows how to say no to sex. Absolutely, yes. yeah, you know, because you're like, look, I don't, I'm not desperate to where I need to fuck you, and you're trouble. Right. So it's like get a, right. you know, go down the line to somebody else. Uh, 
uh, go to Peyton Manning. Or, uh, <laughs> I, well, yeah, go to somebody who makes millions, not my ass. <laughs> <laughs> go to the Manning brother who's not in the NFL. He's at all the parties, Cooper. Uh, well, let's talk a little football. What Peyton Manning, is he done? He, he should, I mean, he's done, right? Listen, it, it looks as though uh, the, the sun is setting on this career. It's unfortunate it, 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 it's surrounding injuries because a guy with such an illustrious career to have to go out with uh, injuries. And, you know, he dealt with them last year. Remember how poorly he played in the, yeah. in the playoff game versus the Colts? And now he's dealing with them and they're going to sit him. And, and I, I just can't foresee him getting over the injuries he sustained, shoulder and then rib and, and, and now the plantar fasciitis. I just can't see him overcoming that, especially at his age. Even a younger guy dealing with all those collectively at one time, it would be difficult to overcome. So I, I think we may have seen the last of him. I'm not going to count him out just yet, but I think it's going to be very hard for him to overcome what he's dealing with uh, right now. You know, you're the guy who competed on that level. Uh, do you think there's any part of Peyton Manning – that stuck around because there was, you know, maybe he doesn't admit it, blah, 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 that really wants to get a second ring so he has as many as Eli. I'm not even joking about that. Like his brother, who, who was always known as not being the one who was, you know, the ultimate player, has more rings than him. Is, does right. that drive a guy, you think? I think it's that, a That drives you, the fact that you, don't, you want to outdo your sibling, of course. Right. That's going to drive you. That's driven you your entire life, and, 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 uh, although you're proud of your sibling. But secondly, you've got that competitive fire where you just have the hunger for another one. And once you've tasted one, and I've never tasted any, but once you've <laughs> tasted one, you, you, you continue to have that drive and that hunger that, to have another. So he's playing for the love of the game. A lot of people do. People used to get on Brett Favre when he would come back multiple times. Like, you got to be kidding me, man. You can, there's an expiration da date on your career, so you're going to play as long as they will have you. And I didn't, bl I never blamed Brett Favre for continuing to come back, and I wouldn't do that with Peyton Manning. The reason he's back is because he thinks he can still help this team, and it's hard for these guys who played as long as he has. It was hard for me to give it up after five years doing something I had done since I was at an organized age, uh, 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 10 years of age. And so uh, it's difficult to let go, man. You, you didn't get to be the best by quitting. And so when it's time to say goodbye, it's hard to yeah. say goodbye. Well, listen, I, I mean, look, you know, uh, Joe and I do comedy. I know it's hard for me on the road after doing an hour stand-up in a theater just to come down from that is hard. Right. I mean, the competitive level of football, it is like a war. You'd have a bond with people. And I was going to ask you, was, was there a period where it really was a letdown to where you're going, how am I going to get that action, that excitement back, you know? Well, work at, you, ask yourself, you, you, you're a comic, you're successful. How the hell can you replicate that once – you leave the stage. Right. Once you leave the screen, there's no way you can do that. They're in the same in sports. Now, I've, I've sort of uh, you know, reinvented myself. Well, I haven't sort of reinvented myself. I have reinvented myself, but I've kind of, you know, uh, itched upon uh, feeling what I did playing a game by being in broadcasting, by being able to scream at people. Well, you're, you're you know, good at it, though. About. You are good at this. Well, well, yeah. well I, 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 I do it my way. And if right. I'm going to get fired, I'm going to get fired being me. So that, and that's not being braggadocious. That's just the, the truth. Uh, and that's a pact I made with myself. And not everyone's going to get me. Not everyone gets you. But that's that's life. So be it. And once you come to terms with that, hey, you're off and flying. Yeah. You know, fuck everybody else. I got to do this my way. And, and hopefully there's enough people that enjoy it and see it as entertainment. So, so far, so good. But there's no way you can replicate uh, the, 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 the highs of uh, uh, playing that game. You run out there in that stadium, there's, you know, 100,000 people cheering for you, and there are other people that are cheering against you. You love that. And, and, and the thing about sports is, you know, we can wean ourselves off of this broadcasting stuff. You can wean yourself off of a, a stellar movie career. There's no weaning yourself off of playing ball or playing baseball or, or playing basketball. I, when they yeah. say it's over, it's over. It's like shutting off a faucet. Boom. Right. No dripping. It's done. <laughs> right. I mean, right, I mean, Joe, well, yeah, do you have that hung, feeling? He hung around for the passing yardage record and the, and the touchdown record, and it's, you know, the personal accolades would probably feel pretty good. Yeah, well, that's what you a, go for, too. You're right, exactly. It's a team sport, but, you know, yeah. I, I want, want people to say I'm the best, and it's the same with comedy, except you just, 
You don't have to quit comedy. You can do this. Well, that's you're... the thing. Yeah, Don Rickles is ninety, yeah. still doing comedy. <laughs> you know, well, Keith, Mick Jagger and Keith Richards—they got a billion dollars. What are they doing this for? Clearly, they because they can. They I can still people, do it. Right. I yeah. love that people question it. It's like, oh, why does he want to keep going out there and doing the thing he's done all his life that pays him millions of dollars and gets a lot of fame? <laughs> right. Why are you doing this? I don't know. You know, right. Because exactly. you're good at it. Yeah. You're good at it, and you like it. And you initially started doing it when you first got into it. You didn't get into it to to be rich. You found you had a knack for it and and it's the same in any in any industry or space that you find yourself in if you've got a uh, knack for it and it feels like it comes not easy that's probably uh, too shallow of a word but it, it you seems like it seems like it's a good fit for you and then you continue to excel and build upon that you do what you've always done and you enjoy it you know like we always said it feels like work it's work i don't want to do it if it feels like work but yeah it's one of the coolest ways to, to work sure i mean I again mean, this isn't i mean look satchel page said it best right he said don't stand don't stand when you can sit don't don't run when you can walk and like comedy or playing ball it's a way to make money without working in a way you know yeah. you're, 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 i mean my old man you know took ladders off of the roofs of vans in two degree weather for 12 hours a day to make on a good day made about 180 bucks he took home you know and he would fall asleep at the dinner table because he was so tired from working uh, he's not around anymore but if you heard me bitching about my life he'd be able to take a bat to my head i mean this is not working right. I haven't worked since my <laughs> mid twenties. You know? well, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit here and brag and say that I walk, you know, through the ten miles through the snow barefoot growing up. But I did all those things that we would do at a young age that you don't see the generation doing now. That's yeah, me too. Up. Me you too. Know, right, we, yeah. we, you know, I, I worked at the car wash detail when I was in junior high at the local Artisan Cadillac dealership in Lubbock, Texas. I worked in the cotton fields in Seminole, Texas. Right. I, worked, I did roofing. I did construction. We, you know, we pitch water. We did all that stuff growing up. Those were our, our summer jobs, man. Yeah. And so I'm enjoying the hell out of it right now. I've, I've earned the right to, to work six months out of year at football and, and do a three-hour radio show and, and be done for the day. And I'm not going to apologize to anyone. No, no, I agree with you. I, I, I came from nothing, you know, absolutely. And uh, I, I was a longshoreman. It was this or loading trucks. I didn't go to uh, an ounce of one, not one college credit to my fucking name. You know, and uh, I, I had to go to summer school to get out of fucking high school i failed gym my senior year put it that way uh, I, didn't, I wonder why yeah well i didn't rotate properly in volleyball that's what um, you know who knew but i i, I again I, I saw a shot of either i where i got out of loading trucks I, it was uh, it yeah. was telling jokes and i got lucky and, and made it but um again i think uh Satchel Page, that's the best advice, man. Don't don't be guilty about it. If you can right. sit, don't stand up. <laughs> you know what the fuck? You owe it to the other people who have to stand up to do that. My old man would have said that. He goes, "Do it for me. Don't work for me." You know, <laughs> it's a, right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then the key to it all is is just be humble about it and don't be flashy and and disrespectful to others. But definitely don't apologize for busting your ass to get where you are. Well, let's talk about. I'm a giant fan. That that loss to the Patriots, man, might have been. That's the worst regular season loss I've ever. Experienced. Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Uh, Wait, you want you want some empathy for my ass? My Cowboys have lost seven in a stri- uh, seven straight. I and know. You want well, to talk about your Giants? Yeah. Well, again, uh, I, Jerry Jones uh, to me is not someone I can ever feel sorry for. Uh, he's, uh, the guy is clearly an, an evil. Boy. How about Jerry Jones? A couple months ago, Brandon Whedon, he's got a beautiful arm. He throws a beautiful pass. Then he cuts him. He just cuts him. Because <laughs> he's evil. He's a Bond villain, Jerry Jones. <laughs> he should be in the next Bond. It should be Jerry Jones he's trying to kill. Uh, but, yeah, again, okay, I'll give you a sympathy if you want it. But uh, the Patriots and, and Tom Brady, uh, I just, honestly, I, I Bob Kraft, I've worked for the guy. The guy hired me once. He paid me very well to do stand-up in his home. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I uh, he's a good man, but... Enough of them already. Is Tom Brady that, <laughs> is Tom Brady that good, or is he one of these guys who's just a winner? Yeah, Ability wise, where do you put Tom All Brady? That. Strict, t- strictly talent. Where's Tom Brady in the top ten quarterbacks? Ever? All of that. Oh. He, he is. He's in. He's in the pantheon of quarterbacks. I would say he may be. Man, it, it, he he's definitely top three. Really? I had wow. Troy, Aik, Troy Aikman on my show uh, two weeks ago, and I asked him where he placed it. He said he may be the best I've seen. Wow. So really? uh, that's saying a lot for Troy Aikman, who's won uh, three rings, to say that. And, and, and I, this guy is phenomenal, and he's had a changing 
uh, changing a carousel of, of wide receivers uh, there uh, with New England. Yeah. He just makes everyone better. But, okay, there's that. But there's stuff out of his control that, that add to that legend. Like, if Seattle just runs the fucking football last year a few times to Marshawn Lynch, uh, do you say the same thing about Brady? Uh, uh, one of those yes, close, one of those they close... got there. I, yeah. I still say the same thing about him. He got there, and they were in a position to win, even though he lost the two to the Giants. Right. He got there. I mean, so you, you got to look at the guy who's, what, played in six Super Bowls now? Yeah, uh, and, four for and, six. And, and one four. Yeah. And, 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 I mean, come on. Uh, you give credit where credit's due. The guy's just a phenomenal player, and he's a winner and all that. And he's a, he's a professional. He works hard at his craft. Here's a guy that they said, you, you're a six-round pick. You may never see the field. You probably shouldn't even be drafted, but we're going to draft you anyway. And look where he is now. He's sitting at the top of, of the, the, the highest level of the game. Uh, give credit where credit's due. He's a bad motherfucker. You could have one coach, Belichick or Tom Landry, in a Super Bowl. One guy. I'm taking Belichick. I look, uh, I, 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 there you go. I'm a lifelong Cowboy fan, and, and I love me some Tom Landry. I'm, I'm taking Belichick. Nice. Okay. He probably knows your plays. The other team. <laughs> That's right. That's true. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Belichick, before, before the invention of the tape recorder or the videotape, <laughs> Belichick's not as good a coach. Pre, pre-video recording, I, I go with Landry. <laughs> Well, what, 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 well, let's talk about the inflation, the footballs. How much do you put into that scandal with the, the inflate gate, whatever you want to call it? Uh, do you, Listen, does that hurt Brady's, uh, uh, you know, legend? Do you put an asterisk there because of the cheating aspect first, of the Patriots? First of all, Belichick was deep throat and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and not Linda Lovelace. Uh, <laughs> I, I, no, uh, you, you know what? It doesn't bother me at all. And I said this numerous times. I thought it was much ado about nothing. I don't give a damn how much air is in or out of the football. Can you stop the man? Right. And so it should be no complaining about footballs. Uh, he's still whipping your ass. Get over it. And guys are going to look for an edge a myriad ways, and that's just part of it. Uh, so I don't understand how air pressure enters, in, enters into the equation. He can sling it with the best of them. Uh, so shut up. If there was something untoward going on with the balls, it's unfortunate. But quarterbacks like their balls different ways. Uh, you know, it, it, it's just – I, I thought it was it was uh, uh, much to do about nothing. And look at the NFL; they got egg all over their face trying to deal with this. I agree with you. Leave, leave the damn balls alone. Now, how do you think? How do you think Aaron Rodgers likes his balls? He likes them very hard. <laughs> he likes them hard and Dan, like Dan is a Bears fan, as you he know. He wants them fire. Yeah, Dan. He wants them real fire. <laughs> Dan swears as a Bears fan that Aaron Rodgers is gay. He's believing that rumor. Oh. He's believing he's that. With that he, he's with that Hollywood actress, isn't he? Uh, okay. You mean the one Liberace was dating for a while? <laughs> oh, she, well, she was on the Daily Show for a while. <laughs> oh, the chick is dating Mon. Olivia. What's your name? Is it Olivia Munn? Yeah, Olivia, Olivia Munn. Yeah. I, I, you know, I did, I did. Uh, Brian. I did the talk, a talk show with her once. I did uh, the the Jimmy Fallon show with Olivia Munn. She is hot, man. So, so she's so she's a front, huh? She's oh. kind of like that that car wash the drug dealer puts up. <laughs> Brian, last year, about a year and a half ago, I think it was Deadspin, they ran a story about Aaron Rodgers, some guy that he was dating, and he was gay. And obviously, I, you know, I, we made fun of it on the show, but I, I, you know, I, I don't believe it. Listen, Ask, that's wait, when wait, you wait. know you've made it. Right. That's when you know you've made it when they start questioning your sexuality. That's why I know I'm a, I'm a, I'm a F-lister. So I, <laughs> they have a question about sexuality. So even though the Bears won on Sunday... The Packers lost, and my absolute favorite sport, favorite pastime is to listen to Packers postgame after they lose. The second caller was, listen, guys, I think that this whole thing about Aaron not coming out of the closet, and we know that the girlfriend is a beard, and you could hear the, the guys going, what is he talking about? We all know that. Just have him come out of the closet. We'll accept him. He's not playing the same way. And when they discovered that he was dating a guy, and then they finally hung up on him. That was the second caller on So Dan, Dan's basically on a caller right. at the, uh, to the Green Bay radio station. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, you know, again, I think it would do a lot for the gay community if the best player in the league came out. It really would. It would do a lot. But I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think it's true. I wish Jay Cutler was gay. 
<laughs> so you can date him. There are, do you hear any rumors about Dan Filato and your in, about being? No. Uh, you know, every so often I'll see something like in the bathroom stall you yeah. know, for a good time called Dan Filato. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's, uh, do you know who Rick Steves is Brian? Oh. Uh, is he any kin to see bass? <laughs> <laughs> He's a PBS travel aid guy, and uh, mm-hmm. Dan can't be in the same room as him. He loves him so much, he gets the shakes and sweats around him. And oh. uh, if you just Google him and listen to him, and the well, next interview we'll talk to you about him, what you think of him. <laughs> uh, give me a, is anyone going to beat the Pats? Is anybody going to beat the Patriots? Uh, are they going to? Are we going to look at an undefeated season here? Well, it's, it's amazing against your Giants. They lose Edelman, his number one target. They, they were without three offensive linemen, and yet they were still able to overcome that and, and find a way to get a victory. So at this point, I'm going to say no, unless they really, really stub their toe. If, they're able, if they turn the ball over numerous times, I'm going to say no, that, that no one's going to beat them. I can't see it. And, and part of me wants to see them go undefeated so you can see all the old Miami Dolphins come out of the woodwork right. and start hating on them. I love that when those cats come out on their canes and, and Shula's Bella cheat and all that, man. It's hilarious. Well, that's I mean, protective of them. Yeah. Yeah. Very protective of them. Right. Uh, well, listen, I mean, the NFL to me, the future is is questionable because, uh, you know, no kids are playing football anymore. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, how, you know, when when people ask the, the commissioner now, when they ask uh, Goodell if it's a brutal game, he can't even say uh, it's a brutal game. It's like he's afraid to say those words. It, clearly, it's obvious that you're going to get hurt if you play football. Odds are you're going to get hurt. You're going to get a concussion. Uh, and what do you think is going to happen if parents just don't let their kids play football anymore? Well, I, I would uh, say one uh, deny the notion that they're not playing. They're still playing it. They just got to learn to play it at a safe, at a safer, uh, learn to play it a safer way. I should say. And yeah, it's inherently dangerous. We knew that way back when I was playing pop one at ten years old. But there's a way to play the game, and even when you play it correctly, sometimes unfortunate situations can uh, arise so you, you're aware of that and the nfl has made this bad for itself right. uh, they could have been come clean a long long time ago about their uh, their research and what was really out there and what was occurring with the former players and current players but they chose not to they chose to go the route uh that they did and, and they're, they're paying for it uh but uh, there's there's no doubt that if the game is is, is Violent. There, there's you're gonna sustain injuries. Hell, there's a reason I walk like Fred Sanford. I'm so beat up. I, I, I mean, it's it's it, it's a tough sport. But I bet if you you ask the majority of people who played it, would would they do it again? I, the majority of them would say yes. We would do it again because it's a fun sport. And where else can you hit someone in the mouth and not go to jail? That's true. Well, apparently in my kitchen in the 70s with my mother and father. Uh, I'll come to your house, dude. That's a, a dark area I won't get into. Uh, well, listen, if you if walking like Fred Sanford ain't the problem. When you start talking like Grady, then then there's a problem. Uh, go, go, let go. <laughs> Uh, all right, Brian. Listen, man. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna. Ha- you can come on whenever you want. You got an open invite, buddy. I mean, uh, okay. You're, and you're, you're right down the street from me. Now you're not that far, right? I am. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, one season's over. One season's over. Everything calms down because I'm, I'm, I've got two days. You know, radio in the morning, TV in the evening. So, right. Uh, they working me like a rented mule. Uh, so uh, once that slows, and I'm not complaining. So uh, once that slows down, I'm gonna come do it. Brian, Brian, before you go, because the fans demand it, just one line from Smokey and the Bandit. <laughs> there ain't no way, no way you could have come for my loin. When I get home, I'm gonna pop your mama in the mouth. <laughs> Brian, one of the few black guys who will do a southern racist sheriff impression. <laughs> I'd love to play that. Yeah. Well, you'd be good at it. Southern racist sheriff. Oh, hell yeah. First I'd thing, be good. First thing I'm going to do when I get home is punch your mom in the mouth. <laughs> All right, Brian, I love you, man. You be well. Love you, dog. Take care, my man. Take care of yourself. Uh, the great Brian Jones. Uh, intimidating, right? Yeah, yeah. He's a big guy, man. And he, he is made of concrete, that guy. He's like one of those guys you, you know, you hug and it's like, whoa, you break a finger hitting his back with your finger. But, um... A good man. It's like uh, uh, it's it's hard to relate to that sports mentality. That's like happening. we have a competitive. Are you a competitive guy? You seem like a very Joe Machi. By the way, is a is a comic. You know that uh, I have a lot of respect for. What an amazing writer. A unique. 
He's a guy who, again, the direct opposite of a hack. He's an, he's an original. Uh, original delivery, great writing, and uh, and a good guy. Oh, thank you so much. I think everybody likes Joe Maggi. Um, but do you have a competitive nature with people? Do, oh, does that yeah, come definitely. Out? Yeah, okay. Because, like, uh, I think it's with the people you come up with when you see that, like, uh, Michelle Wolf or Sam Morrell have, like, a, a new joke. Right. Like, crap, I got to I gotta get something that people are talking about. Well, though, but those are people you like. Like, do you get mad when you see someone you don't respect or you hate making it? You don't have to say No, I don't get mad. I just get frustrated when audiences laugh at jokes that have been... Easy stuff. Easy stuff or... Or, or have been done right. in different ways like any kind of like uh, where was I the other day and someone did a bit about <laughs> white people dancing and oh. just murdered and I'm like was it a black comic? no it was a oh. white comic oh really? and like it, it's me it's like anytime there's a stereotype that's a joke that's been told so many times oh, I that know. you don't you yeah. don't even have to have the setup and the premise. Right. You just have to get to the punchline. Yeah. And, and that's that what, yeah, that's that's, that's a good sign if something's original or not. If you if you don't find you don't have to set it up at all. <laughs> but there's <laughs> a lot of discuss so much. There's a lot of audience though that it's tough because it's that late show Friday night. Right. They went to work that day. They've had a number of beers. And yeah. then you're trying to bring up a new idea. They don't want to hear art. They, they, they're <laughs> they like, what's this guy killing baby Hitler? They hear, <laughs> they hear words. Right. And then they get angry because they didn't hear the whole. Well, Joe, whole again, they don't know context. You're right. No. Joe, Joe does one of the funniest uh, bits I've seen uh, in a long time. Very original. Uh, about, uh, well, yeah, give the premise. What is it? Well, I, th- I say in the idea, like a lot of people talk about what they do if they had a time machine. And one of the things they did say is they go back and kill Hitler to prevent World War II. That is something like since the 70s, a lot of intellectuals at cocktail parties would have that like debate too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. And my, but it also is talked about on construction sites. So it's everybody can Everybody talks right, about right. like what, what would they do? The uh, time machine and killing Hitler, right? Yeah. Good question. And my thing was like, well, if I went back and killed baby Hitler and back to the future, all the time machine move. All the time machines break. <laughs> so what if I just killed this baby? <laughs> yeah, you're the only one like, who knows they're, they're what's going to happen. If I have a time machine, <laughs> they're going to be like, "What the hell did you do that for?" And I'm like, "I'm from the future. This makes so much sense." Right, and, and then you're going, "Well, let me tell you what this baby was going to do." Yeah, and they're not going to believe that. <laughs> like a shower that that is poison. That's ridiculous. And and then I t- try to take it further by saying, like, "Well, if I kill." baby Hitler like what if like Reichsfuhrer Himmler right they have or, yeah, he or had, propaganda minister did the same thing he had so people who helped him yeah I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to kill a lot of babies to <laughs> baby get this, Gehring to get even like I'd have to go back to like World War One <laughs> and make sure America doesn't enter whatever right. I have to do <laughs> And then, um, so now it's a mass murder of babies that you have I'm, to explain. I'm going to look like a terrible person in the history books, but I know I've done something good. And Louis C.K. was sitting at the table, and yeah. he said, "You know, like, what if Hitler had a time machine?" Right. And when it and came like, here, and he the future, or what, he what? was doing something to prevent something from way in the future. And I'm like, oh boy, that, oh wow, that gets, that, that is a gets, turn that gets darker. Yeah, and. <laughs> And I, I just, I don't know if I could bring it that far. Yeah, no, that's, that's where you start to lose people. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'd lose people way before that. Yeah. <laughs> way well, before that. Well, if you bring that. up Hitler sometimes, they don't, they're like, they're like, oh, and they don't even, okay, listen. It's uh, such an absurd uh, right. idea, and I would never mean to disrespect anyone who went through that, but honestly, I think someone who went through that isn't worried about some dumb comedian's and ridiculous joke right. about a machine that doesn't even exist. And they're probably not at the comedy cellar probably if, if you survived Auschwitz in the third row in 2015. <laughs> you know, uh, my, my grandfather, uh, you know, not Jewish, Italian, though, fought against uh, the Germans, was caught in a prison camp, and I love the guy to death. I don't get offended by that uh, by that stuff. Again, you know, the, the, I'm not pretending to, to, you know, I've gone through what, um, you know, a lot of, you know, even the ancestors and the... the Grandkids of Jewish people who went through that. That's uh, people, that's as bad as it gets. But people what you do, it's a funny joke. Of what you're doing there, you know. Yeah, and people say even joking about certain topics trivializes it. Right. And I'm like, does it? When you see a World War, t- when you see Schindler's List, <laughs> right. are you thinking about a comedian's dumb joke no, about a time not. machine? That no, doesn't it even, doesn't trivialize it at it's, all. It's like when people say Willie Mays was falling down the outfield at the end of his career. People remember it. No, they don't. No. They remember 660 home I runs. I don't remember that at all. Yeah, exactly. The only people who remember that are people uh, talking about him falling <laughs> down the outfield and how 
That's the only time people remember it. Exactly. You know, um, like like if uh, like JFK, if the last thing JFK said before he got shot was the N word, I wouldn't believe that. I'd, I'd remember all the stuff he did for black people. Right. Well, well, sure. And actually, I don't know if it was on tape. I'd probably remember that. That's yeah. A bad example. And like, what if you went back in time, and like saved JFK from being killed and it started some other horrible thing that's right it, it stuff affects other things yeah you never know yeah, yeah. what it's like the whole butterfly effect but uh and like people tweeted at me it's like oh the new york times magazine stole your joke and and right they they came out with a poll not long after would with, with that question would you kill baby hitler and they phrased it baby hitler that's why i thought they might it might have been but something i'm joe saw. i'm telling you those guys go to places like the comedy cellar and they rip us off all the fucking time all the time Right, uh, I just, I, but also it is an idea that's out there. I have to give them right. some benefit of the doubt. Yeah, because, okay, but this, uh, the baby Hitler thing, I think, is your best argument because that makes it funnier, that phrase. Yeah, because yeah. uh, that's what bothered me about the Terminator movies. Right. <laughs> Why would robots go back and kill an adult Sarah Connor that can run and think? Yeah. When I could have killed baby Sarah Connor <laughs> so much. <laughs> Babies are, things are so easy to kill. You just go like another 22 years back. They're like, make sure your baby doesn't turn over. Right. That's how, like, and you're, you're waiting until she's like 22 and has a job and like a credit card. Well, I have a joke, you know, where I, I, I say I would kill baby Ryan Seacrest, baby A-Rod. But what about, what do you really think about that besides baby Hitler? Baby, baby uh, Robert Kardashian. Baby, you know. Oh. I mean, do you think society's better without those? those girls i think if you eliminated the kardashians it would just be some other <laughs> another figurehead dumb rich family that it, our publicity on that wars. level though i mean they're extraordinary i i think they're the first but i almost have to give them some credit because right. to me it's almost like they're doing an andy kaufman type routine <laughs> where it's like they're being so over the top ridiculously stupid with and they don't know fake it, but... weddings and yeah. and all this nonsense and People just fall for it, hook, line, and sinker. Yeah, fake weddings that they make money off of. Like, she pocketed a couple million bucks on that Chris Humphreys thing. It's so disappointing that you look at how many Twitter followers that oh, she has and then how many Twitter followers that Colin Quinn or... Oh, I know. Attack. It's just like, oh, no, you, you're following the wrong people. But it, a lot, it shows you that Twitter's for kids, though. That's what that shows you. Because, you know, it's obvious that younger people... You, like, Bruce Springsteen has 500,000 Twitter followers. If it were 1977, he'd probably have 20 million that, because it's younger people people that's a good point right. and there's a lot of great young artists that have a ton of twitter followers and a lot of great young comedians but i i've had people that i respect to talk to me about the kardashians that, but do you that, measure I, do you not think about the younger generation do you measure someone by their twitter followers i guess we do right i mean do you measure someone's i know comedy clubs relevant do. oh i know I, that yeah. uh, which is unfortunate yeah uh, uh, but it's also a lot of times comedians get a lot of twitters from being on mtv yeah, and then I they get, go on the yeah, road right, and they're not right, right. quite ready and it, it anytime all those comedy, girl and guy code people they have seven minutes of stuff a lot of them some of them are great yeah. like Dan Soder's an amazing oh, comedian oh no yeah I don't put him in that I gotta put Dan lot, in that category there's a lot of them that uh, they're, I'm, I'm not saying they can't be good but they're not ready yet I'm and saying they can't be good I think it hurts I think it hurts to have success that's, that's why when people criticize Justin Bieber yeah. I'm like this guy's been successful before he knew how to fail. Right, right, This right. guy's never been rejected by a woman. Yeah, I know. That, like, crushed him. I mean, he like, probably would have been an asshole if he parked cars I, for a living. And I now he had this, I mean. I would be such a jerk. Yeah. If I would was you successful though? I don't know if you would. Oh, I don't know if yeah. you would be. No, because you're not a jerk now. <laughs> well, but, you have some success. You're, you're, you're a respected comic. Yeah, I mean, how many Twitter followers I've, do you have? I have, like, 29,000. It's probably dropping. No. I'm I find, <laughs> every time I tweet more than, like, one joke a day, I find that it goes do down. Do people unfollow you? Yeah, people unfollow you. And also, like, if you say anything that, like, might upset, it's a little bit on the edge. We were talking about a little bit oh, before I that. Oh, I know. Yeah, they, yeah. That people are afraid to take a risk. And I'm like, yeah, go take a risk. Like, and I just hate the idea that, like, if people don't like one joke I said, that's fine. Right. It's the idea that everyone has to agree with everyone, everything everyone says all the time. It makes no sense. It makes Talk no sense. Boring. It doesn't mean that I can't like that person as a, as a person. Right. It doesn't mean that they can't like me, and it doesn't mean that I'm right. Like I heard Bill Burt say, I think he said he, on his podcast, it's like, when did it start that I have to always be right all the time? Yeah. And it's just so silly to me that like, I made a joke about John Kerry saying that, that Charlie Hebdo. I think it was rational. Think at least had some rationale right. to it. He didn't, and I don't want to say that he defended it no. or he said it was okay, but I think that there's there's some sort of need of some people to say, 
when there's a terrorist action that, oh, how can we also not hurt their feelings? Right. Or And it just bothered well, that's me. That's certainly the liberal point of view, absolutely, where John Kerry comes from. But, I mean, John Kerry, oh, he caught himself immediately. He did. And I, I don't know if he caught himself because he was afraid of backlash or he really felt maybe I said something wrong. I mean, you know, we're finding out through all this that, first of all, John Kerry you know, he, he ran in 2004 as a man of the people. And then he, there was a shot of him snowboarding in Aspen. He parked his boat, his yacht, in yeah. another state to avoid the taxes on his yacht. And, and, and a lot of regular guys speak that good of French. I mean, he's speaking fluent French on TV every time I put it on. It's like, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah I relate to you, John. Yeah. Uh, and, and I don't want to be a gotcha guy. And, uh, I, you know, I, I'm sure he did kind of realize it. And he's, all these guys are speaking in the moment. Yeah, it's tough. It is. is. I don't. I mean, I'll blame the guy. But you got something like Fox News, which is the most entertaining news network, and they pounce right on that. I mean, a new drinking game, if I still drank, would be how many times someone on Fox News says, "How dare you?" Well, even (laughs) every time, how dare you? But even to me, like Fox News is is widely hated among comedians. But there was just a survey that came out that said ninety three percent of journalists. Are, are, are all liberal. Still, yeah, they're all and I scumbags, thought, well, first of all. Look, if you're going to complain about Fox News being biased, yeah. complain about NPR being biased, complain they're about NBC Yeah, they're all NBC fucking, they all have an agenda, first of all. Everyone, and every, the agenda, and if they know the agenda is not good for people, they still push it. Uh, and it, does, it doesn't matter. And Fox News is just as credible as any other news network. Uh, it's got the hottest chicks on the fucking planet, by the way. Uh, and uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I, I am not uh, a left-wing liberal comic on, uh, by any means. I probably go more to the right of anything. Of course, I'm a convicted felon; I can't vote. But I, uh, I, I, yeah, I hate when I hear shit like that in show business in general. Like, you have to hate Fox News, and there's the idiots who hate it just because they know they have to hate it. Yeah, because they might not be welcomed at the party. You know, to me, it's like it's when people are offended about a joke that is offensive to. That might be offensive to one group, right? But then if they do a joke about a, a group that they don't care about, yeah, they don't course, say yeah. they don't say a word about yeah, it. Of course, they don't defend it. They don't, they don't go out on a limb yeah. ever. You know, uh, yeah. Let me take a break. I want to. Uh, I want to try to find this one other thing about. Uh, I'm not going to say it, but all right, I, we'll, we'll take a break. I wanted to. Hey everybody, uh, it's Dan along with Joe, and I already had to jump in the shower because they're coming and pick. Ah. Hey everybody, it's Dan along with Joe. Artie had to jump in the shower because they're coming to pick him up for the Pete Holmes Judd Apatow show. And uh, Joe, why don't you tell us what you're going to be doing in the next couple of weeks? Hey, just want to give a quick uh, quick reminder to people that uh, I'm taping my first album. Uh, it's November 24th at the Village Underground. It's a Comedy Central satellite, uh, Comedy Cellular Sell- Satellite Room. It's an eight o'clock show and a ten o'clock show. It's free. Uh, there probably is a drink minimum, but it's probably going to sell out. So if you're interested in seeing a great show, I got Cypher Sounds opening, Sam Morell middling, and then uh, I'm probably going to do about uh, 50 minutes, and it's going to be great. It'll probably be out uh, mid-December on iTunes and Amazon. So that is at the. Uh, it's at the Village Underground. Village uh, Underground, which is the satellite room of the Comedy Cellar. So if you go to the Comedy Cellar's website, you'll be able to make reservations right there. You got it. Thanks, Joe, for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, we will see you soon, hopefully. We've just found out you live right near here, so hopefully you'll become a regular. Oh, that'd be great. I appreciate it. You got it. Thanks. Thank you. The Artie Lang Uncensored Podcast at artiequitter.com.